So I, I, I want to make some counter-arguments to this. And th there are three arguments, and I think they're all reasonably strong, but I could be wrong, and I want you to tell me if they're not. And first of all, there is no such thing as disease. Disease is not a thing. It's a concept. And, and you can't count it in, in the same way as, the, you know, disease, you th we think it's a real thing, but it's not. It's much more difficult. It's a concept. So I think there's no such thing as disease. And even if there was, its burden couldn't be counted. And even if it could, it would not be a useful way of setting health priorities, right? So th I think there's three arguments there. First, there's no such thing as disease. Second, you can't count its burden. It's impossible. And third, even if you could, it wouldn't be a worthwhile thing to do. So there's no such thing as disease. So th there was a guy, um, Jeffrey Rose, worked in the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and he said a few things about this some time ago. You know, he, he had a paper called The Trouble with Disease. And he said, well, the trouble with disease is there's no disease that you either have or you don't have, um, except perhaps sudden death and rabies. All other diseases you either have a little or a lot, right? So, like, disease isn't, isn't a sort of, disease is like a pathophysiological process, and you can have more of it or less of it, but a lot of people don't either have it or not have it. You know, we all have it. We might have a little bit of it, you know. Pe most, most people my age have a little bit of cardiovascular disease. Um, you know, we, you know, we might have a little bit of, I don't know, low mood or something like that. But so diseases isn't there or not. You have a little bit of it or more of it. Now, the, the, the counter argument, people always cite death. They say, well, death, you're either dead or you're not. Uh, that's, that, well, even, even then, I mean, I mean in, it, you get patients who are brain dead. Um, so, there are, so parts of them are alive, but their brain is dead. Um, but the one that everybody cites to me is pregnancy. Well, you're either pregnant or you're not. And, um, and they, they say, well, that's surely dichotomous, right? You're either pregnant or you're not. And then I tell them about my wife, um, who, 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 uh, who once told me that she was very pregnant. And so I said, don't be ridiculous, darling. You're either pregnant or you're not. It's completely <laughs> dichotomous. But my wife's always right. So it was twins. So she was very pregnant. Um, and so there she, there she is celebrating. I was right. <laughs> I was very pregnant after all. You were wrong. So, uh, um, and she could have been even more pregnant. And I was pleased that she wasn't. So um, let's take something like myocardial infarction, right? So that's, you know, a myocardial infarction is either there or not, surely. You know. You've had a heart attack, Mr. Jones. You have not had a heart attack. So a heart attack is either present or absent. Well, that's not, so, that's not necessarily true. And so in order to work out how to define a myocardial infarction, they have to get, they, every now and then, they get all of these experts from all around the world to sit around a table for quite some time and figure out what a myocardial infarction is. And it's much more difficult than it seems. So, um, so that, you know, this is the third universal uh, definition of myocardial infarction. And any necrosis, so basically you've got a heart and you've got heart muscles. And if heart muscle cells die, uh, that's called, um, you know, heart muscle and myocardial ischemia. So any necrosis in the setting of myocardial ischemia should be labeled as an MI. So if you get any death of myocardial cells because they're not getting enough oxygen, we should call that an MI. But that's very tricky because um, as tests of myocardial necrosis have got more sensitive, more and more people can be defined as having a myocardial infarction. And so th they recognize this as a problem. The development of more, more sensitive markers of myocardial necrosis mandates further revision. So the, 
And the advent of this troponin testing dramatically increased the numbers of myocardial infarctions. So myocardial infarctions are going up because we're better at detecting myocardial ischemia. And actually, it, it, the concept of it as a dichotomous thing that's either present or absence is getting more, more difficult to sustain. So th these are patients who have undergone surgery. So if you have, you know, patients who are having operations uh, for various things, if you measure their troponin in their blood, the, if this measure of myocardial ischemia, so troponin is this protein that's released by myocardial cells when they die. And, you know, some people, you know, th there's, there's a whole um, range of troponin concentrations in the blood. Some pa patients have a higher level, some people... So where you, where you say, well, look, you've had a myocardial infarction, you haven't, it's, to it's totally arbitrary, right? So where you decide when people have had a myocardial... So a myocardial infarction isn't a thing that exists. It's just an idea that we define, right? So it's very easy for me to count the chairs in the room because these chairs are they're a discrete thing, you know, you can count them, but you, diff, counting myocardial infarctions is much more difficult because a myocardial infarction is just what you say it is. And if you, if you make the cut point here, there'll be fewer. If you make the cut point here, there'll be more. And the risk of death is linearly related to your troponin release. So, you know, these people have a worse, these people have a worse prognosis than these people, these people have a worse prognosis than these people, and these have w worse than these. So, a myocardial infarction is just what you say it is, and, and it's, it's nothing more. Um, so, I don't think there is such a thing, a thing, as a myocardial infarction. It's just what we call it to, to be. And um, this is the relationship between fasting glucose and stroke, ischemic heart disease, cardiovascular death. See, it's a continuous relationship, yeah? So glucose, if your glucose passes a certain threshold, if it passes, if your fasting blood glucose is greater than 6.9 millimoles per litre, we say that you've got diabetes, yeah? We say that you've got non-insulin dependent diabetes if your fasting blood glucose is higher than 6.9. Now if we said, if we made it higher than 6, there'll be a huge increase in the global burden of diabetes. You know, enormous increase in the global burden of diabetes just because what we've called diabetes has changed slightly. So, um, and there's no reason why it shouldn't be six because having it six is much, there's a worse prognosis if it's six than if it's five. So if, if we said diabetes is having a fasting glucose greater than six, there'll be a, you know, maybe diabetes would go right up to the top of the charts in, in, um, in the global burden of, of disease charts. And so there's no such thing as diabetes, it's just what you call it. There's no, there's no such thing as, um, Oh, this is um, blood pressure lowering. So, you know, blood pressure lowering according to baseline blood pressure. And the lower your blood pressure, the better. Whatever your blood pressure is, the lower, you, the lower your blood pressure, the better. So, you know, if you, you know, if your systolic is greater than 160, if you lower it, there's a reduced risk of death. If your systolic is less than 140, if you lower it, there's the same reduced risk of death. There's no such thing as hypertension. Hypertension is not a disease. It's just what you call it. Same with hypercholesterolemia. Whatever your blood cholesterol, the lower the better. I went to my GP. Um, when I was 50, I went to the GP. I thought, well, 50? Hmm. My, risk of, my baseline risk of cardiovascular disease is going up. I should take a statin. And so I went to the GP and I said, I want to take a statin. And she said, well, let me measure your cholesterol. And I said, no, 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 I don't want you to measure my cholesterol. I just want you to give me a statin. 
And she found, oh, that's very difficult. And I, and I said, well, why do you want to measure my blood, my cholesterol? You know, I, I'm not interested in my cholesterol. I'm just trying to lower my cardiovascular <coughs> risk and just give me a statin, you know. She found it very difficult. She wanted to diagnose hypercholesterolemia. She wouldn't let me have a statin. I had to take her papers from the Lancet showing that whatever, <laughs> whatever my cholesterol is, it doesn't make any difference. It's better if it's lower, you know. So people in China have a much lower cholesterol than people in, 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 in England. Um, you know, whatever your cholesterol is, the lower, the better. Um, but, it, but this disease concept's getting in the way, you see. You know, the, so doctors don't realize this. They won't let you have a, a statin or, um, unless you've got hypercholesterolemia, which, which is there's no such thing as. There's no such thing as hypercholesterolemia. It doesn't exist. Um, there's, you know, there's no such thing as obesity. You know? Obesity is another made-up disease. You know, there's a population distribution of body mass index, and if you decide to cut it at 30 milligrams per kilogram, or 30 kilograms, what is it? Kilograms per meter squared, isn't it? Kilograms per meter, it's completely arbitrary. You know, so how many, so there's no such thing as, as, as obesity. So I'm not saying that there aren't, there isn't suffering. There are causes of disease and there are effects, but diseases are concepts, right? They're only what you define them to be. And so you can't count them like you can count chairs, you know? And these things are very fluid. And so this guy, Carl Wunderlich, he, he spoke about this a long time ago. He said, a view which takes abstract concepts as things, implying their actual existence, and treating them as entities is a logical blunder that has frequently crept into medicine and flourishes there. So doctors are so used to talking about this thing, diabetes, and you know, they talk about diabetes, you know, what do you do? I work in diabetes, and then they, it, they come to believe it's a real thing, you know, and you can count it. You know, how many diabetes are there? Well, let's count them. Blah, blah, blah. But so I don't really think there's anything, there's any such thing as disease. Um, it's only what you define it to be. And, um, you know, you could greatly change the global burden of depression depending on how you define depression, you know. Um, I mean, I find de the diagnosis of depression, you know, I looked it up this morning, ICD-10, you know, very a bit complicated, you know four of these things for at least two weeks and there's a list of different things and it's very confusing so I, I first of all I don't think there's any such thing as disease next thing if there was uh, its burden couldn't be measured and, and the thing the reason why you can't measure the burden is, is that the disease you can have one death Everybody gets one death each, yeah? But you, can, you can't say what caused it. It doesn't have one cause. So you can, have, you can have arthritis, and you can have, so you can have arthritis, and heart disease, and depression, and you can die. And um, so the problem with these bur the burden people is they've, they've got somehow, they've got to attribute that death to one of these diseases, you know? So was that death due to the depression? Or was it due to the arthritis? Or was it due to the heart disease? You know, everybody in epidemiology knows that disease is multifactorial, right? That there's no, you know, disease doesn't have a single cause. Well, and death don't have a single cause either, you know? You can actually die you can die of one thing or another, or the combination of two things, or the combination of ten things. So it's very difficult to say what death is due to what disease, because you can have many diseases at the same time. So you can't calculate the burden of disease because That diseases aren't mutually exclusive. And 
if you look at the global burden of disease study, if you go to the methods section and try and figure out how they did this, you know, how they made these judgments, it gets very confusing. And it's, it gets very, you read the methods section and it gets more and more confusing and because it's all trickery, because conceptually it's wrong, you can't, it can't be done, right? You can't, you can't count, you can't attribute this disease to one cause. I mean, doctors do it on death certificates, but it, it's not scientific by any stretch of the imagination, you know? We, 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 we wouldn't do that in epidemiology.